So chapter 13 is my favorite topic, kinetics. We just got through a chapter that told us why a reaction will happen. There'll be less energy if it gets to the other side of it. Even though it tells us they are spontaneous, it doesn't tell us how fast it's going to happen. You could have something like an explosion that's crazy fast, or here under the ocean, a wreck is slowly oxidizing and all the metals are no longer pure because they're getting combined with the various things in the seawater. Or even more slowly, a diamond should eventually just turn into a lump of coal. Just because you know they're spontaneous, you don't know how fast it's going to happen. And that's why we need kinetics. It tells us how something happens not just that it will. We'll have a little review here. Which sample's at the highest temperature and which is at the lowest temperature? Okay, if we look at this, we see the samples are the same size. They have the same number of particles in them. So clearly we're supposed to be looking at something about how they're moving. And if we look, this one appears to be moving the slowest. This is a medium speed and this is moving the fastest. The things that are at the lowest temperature are going to move the slowest. The things that are the highest temperature are going to move the fastest. And then they ask which mixture of gases contains the molecules colliding most frequently and with the most energy. Because you can see they're all the same size. They all have the same number of particles. So how often are they going to collide? But if I start thinking about the energy involved, I can see this one has the most energy because it's the same type of particle, but it happens to be moving faster. And then as it turns out, if it is moving faster, it's going to encounter another molecule more often. So this one, the one that is at the highest temperature, is going to have the molecules collide most frequently and with most energy. We have two molecules that are of the same stuff. They didn't bother to do what they usually do, which is write down what they are. They're asking us to do that. Write a balanced equation for each step in the reaction. Okay, so there's step one. Let's write a, try to write a balanced equation. Well, if it's blue, that's supposed to be nitrogen and red is oxygen. Those happen to be the same thing. But what I'd like to do then is to write it as being that there are two nitrogen dioxides. And then I go and I see my arrow nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen trioxide. So that's my first step. Here, nitrogen trioxide. But ultimately, we ended up with nitrogen monoxide and oxygen diatomic. And then it says, and add the two reactions together to obtain an overall reaction. This matches that. One on the left, one on the right. Cancel it out just like you're doing algebra. And you're going to get this. I can see here that I had one equation and a different equation, and I added them together, and I ended up with this, and now there is no sign of one of the items that was in it. We will go on. Having noticed that, here, here's what I wrote for the first one. There's what I wrote for the second one. And I skipped over this the first time. So what they're making us think about is, what do those dashed lines represent? Well, what's the difference between this and this? Well, it's clearly not this part. That part just looks the same, right? Oh, I somehow this ended up with one of the oxygens starting to separate. Oh, so this is one process must be that I am breaking a bond. What about this other dashed one? If I look to this side now, I see that this differs from that in that the oxygen is now attached to it. So this is making a bond. So the two processes that they're talking about here are making bonds and breaking bonds. So the dashed lines represent a change from either a bond that is being unmade or a bond that is being made. And we can see that the same would be true in this one. That this base unit here is still here, but these this one's separating, and this one is also separating. And then ultimately, these two form a bond over here. 
Then the last thing they say here is explain why one of the products in step one is not a product of the overall reaction. Well, we did this. We ended up canceling it. It got used up in the second reaction. That's why it doesn't appear anywhere. It wasn't an original item. It was created, but then it was destroyed before you got to the end. So this is something that we call an intermediate. It came into existence, but it did not get to last. The, the reaction continued past that.